Hello and welcome to Go With The Heat. I'm Dominic. And I'm John. I'm Melissa. And this is your cultural guide to the phenomenon that was Miami Vice. This week, it's here. I don't know what else to say. Instead of running around the room, just jumping up and down like this, this is the series finale. Last week, we had our pre-show. This week, we are breaking down Season 5, Episode 21, Freefall. This is it. The end of the line. Three years ago in May, we launched our first episode where we said we were going to do Miami Vice. And believe it or not, here we are. Like Time has come full circle, and we are here to the last episode. And one of us has become a complete different person. (laughs) 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 You guys pulled a bewitched. (laughs) Got a different Darren now. It originally premiered on May 21st, 1989. Just a reminder, it's written by Scott Shepard, Ken Solars, and Michael Mann. We're just going to say Michael Mann. I know it says uh, Frank Holman, but, you know. It's it's Michael Mann, the director. He threw up his little production sign at the end, so I feel like we kind of have to include him. Yeah, exactly. It is directed by Russ Mayberry, who also directed Over the Line, which I thought would be so much more significant in Freefall <laughs> with Highsmith. Turns out, <laughs> <laughs> turns out he's expendable. Yeah, <laughs> and I mean... like we see to wrap this thing up, so like maybe he could soak up some bullets. That'd be good. <laughs> this is such a massive mammoth episode. We are not going to do a check I'm not going to do anything else. Remember, we talked about guest stars and music last week, so we can get just straight into talking about this episode. So without further ado, we're just going to jump right in and give our breakdown of Free Fall. When we open up, we're in Costa Morada. Just to ask a question, have we been to Costa Morada before? I feel like this is the Jimmy episode with Glenn Fry. That, that we were also in Costa Morada, and I forgot to look it up before no, we started recording. I don't think it was Costa Morada. It was something else. Okay. <laughs> the reason why I thought we oh, the same country is because we used the same footage recorded in that episode for the people on the street. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's the same people. Let's get that straight. <laughs> it's just the same clips. When the episode first started, I was wondering, like, this Vice? Did I click on the right thing? Because it, <laughs> it didn't feel like Vice at first. <laughs> the general, Bourbon, He's talking to a couple of reporters. He doesn't think he's got a problem, regardless of how many riots and people are dying on the street. Everything is just fine. And then luckily, at the last minute, he gets called away by his number two. No more questions, please. Away I go. Meanwhile, somewhere else in Costa Morada, Budget Ray Liotta is talking to a man tied to a tree. (laughs) (laughs) He asks this man, Guzman, if he works for Borbin. The man nods, says, but I'm not going to give up any more information. Non-union Ray Liotta smacks him around and then just finds the plane ticket for where he was heading. Like, oh, Miami. I see you were heading to Miami. Okay, we don't need you anymore. Guys, I feel like it's kind of weird that they're speaking such good English. Like, aren't <laughs> Should they be speaking Spanish? I thought that too. <laughs> also, why were they interviewing them in English? Well, Curious about that. Just, just a question on this type of TV stuff. This comes up all the time. Why do they need to speak in in English, but with Hispanic accents? <laughs> <laughs> why yes. don't they just speak English? Yeah. Like, <laughs> you know, do they have that little faith in us that we can't read a subtitle? Like if, <laughs> if they actually let them speak Spanish, like we wouldn't be able to keep up by reading the stuff on the bottom. No, there's no way. There's no way. I mean, you would think that if they actually had Hispanic actors, that they would be able to do that. So you're saying that the general might not speak Spanish? Yeah, that's my inkling, is that maybe General Bourbon doesn't speak Spanish. <laughs> Back at his palace, Bourbon is leaving with his best dog, like a traveling companion. They're going to stuff the huh? dog and Bourbon inside of this coffin. That happens to have Guzman's body inside of it. So what we learn here is that Borbin is trying to flee the country, but Hispanic Leota is not going to let him do that because he's the head of the cartel. He wants him to be in a commercial with him about quitting smoking. (laughs) And that's what Hispanic Leota wants him to do. But (laughs) Borbin is not about doing that. The biggest problem is that this is a terrible gift. All right. I mean, it's not even a new casket. It's a used casket. It's already got a body in it. (laughs) <laughs> and what's he going to do with the used casket? He's going to use it to sacrifice to his gods and then become alive again in Miami. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to give tubs the, the yips. <laughs> <laughs> Tub's going to get sweaty. <laughs> I called it. He's getting sweaty. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, Miami, Sonny isn't in the rock and roll kind of mood. Him and Tubbs are driving around. Or oh, sorry, they're parked out in front of a building. They're waiting for 
a man named Raymond, which we were wrong last week. And it John was, was right. Raymond. John was right. So we're just going to call him ramen like the noodles. <laughs> Sydney says it's got to be a victory lap here. <laughs> Sydney says there's got to be a better way to service adult life. One of many hints that they say throughout the entire episode. Like, that'd be something better that I'm doing. I'm so tired of doing this. I he wish... says specifically, mm. Sonny exactly. says a bunch of them. Yes. Yeah. Sonny is burnt out. So he already sounds burnt out in this scene. But beyond this scene, like we find him going to the bar. He's just not into it anymore. Finally, their turkey comes out and Rico says, let's do him. Do a give chase as Ramen tries to outrun in his GTO, which, you know, is a is a muscle car. That's a solid muscle car. Not exactly known for being nimble, but, but you yeah. know, like he, he does all right. He's a frisky little bugger. <laughs> I think this is more just Sonny being bored because they were supposed to just follow him. Somehow, they easily got made, and it turned into a car chase. Well, I mean, when you drive a Lambo, like, how do you not easily get made everywhere? You know, hey, so two cops would drive that Lambo behind me. <laughs> Crosstown chase montage. Raymond is never actually able to get away, but the duo get blocked in and arrested. Or to their surprise, like, they, they didn't know what was going on. So we only got two stories going on and none of them look good for the duo. Okay, but why do they get in the car with those people and they don't even ask any questions? They sit there and look at each other like, I guess we're going somewhere. <laughs> I guess we're in trouble. It was like they were going to go to that secret society What do they do with the again. Lambo? <laughs> yeah, who takes the Lambo? You can't just leave that in a bad neighborhood park. <laughs> Have no tires when you come back. <laughs> and then we go to the opening credits. When we come back from the opening credits... We're at this warehouse slash stage, and they get brought before a trial of by musical theater with the DA <laughs> officer, Andrew Baker, presiding and also on tenor. <laughs> I'm pretty sure they do mud wrestling here on the weekends. <laughs> they have a hell of a roller derby team in Miami. Oh, I'm sure they do. <laughs> <laughs> the duo are still shocked, and then Chief Highsmith comes in. And he says he doesn't know what the hell is going on either. He's even more shocked. <laughs> <laughs> and then the the like CIA or FBI guy comes up and he begins his pitch with mission doesn't exist. We don't exist. Nothing exists. This is the Illuminati. <laughs> At this point, I'm thinking this is a Highsmith setup because he still has that vigilante group that's out there mm -hmm. doing their own investigations to bring down people outside of the judicial system. So I'm thinking this is a Highsmith setup. The vice team is going to see right through this as a Highsmith setup. And then this is where this is how this episode is going to end. Let's see how that goes. I'm thinking you're wrong. <laughs> I don't know, though. I mean, that's a good guess. That would be a logical step to think based off the previous episodes. But in Miami Vice Land, nothing makes sense. So. Baker essentially says, like what John was saying, that they need Vice's help to go to Costa Morada to get Bourbon and bring him back to Miami so they can have him testify against a bunch of different cartel people in the United States. Okay, let's let that sink in. And at in. this point, I am thinking, <laughs> oh, thank God, it's extraction, not protection detail. I mean, we all know how protection detail goes. So, like, extraction. <laughs> I'm having a little trouble believing that the CIA doesn't have anyone with any undercover experience. Yeah, I mean, why would you need two Miami Vice cops to do this for you? And they don't do... What they do has nothing to do with they're like, oh, you have connections in the drug world and the drug cartel. And this he, they don't use any of those. They just show up there. No, they just go snap them. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's why I'm thinking they've been to Costa Morada before because they have connections. Maybe, maybe that's what it's called. Mm -hmm. and I, it could be. We got to look that up before we keep going. But then why wouldn't they use, what's the pilot's name? Jimmy? Jimmy. Yeah, I know. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, why wouldn't they use to fly him in on the seaplane? So, John, that's exactly what I'm wondering. And I'm hoping that when the Vice team heads down to Costa Morada, that they do have a good Jimmy with them because that's what they need when they travel overseas. They need a good Jimmy. Do they have a good mm -hmm. Jimmy? <laughs> Highsmith is just as surprised but the DA gives them approval to go down there. They get weapons from their ca contact in Costa Morada. Sonny's not convinced, but the DA brings in Raymond, who says that he's also well connected in Costa Morada, and he recommended Tubbs and Crockett to go do this. And of course, Sonny has every um, reason to be suspicious. Yeah, and I love this because the CIA guy goes, and you'll be answering to criminal. Yeah. That that's gonna go. That's that's how you start your pitch, right? <laughs> <laughs> you know that guy you hate and you were just chasing. Yeah. 
he's gonna be your boss <laughs> yep exactly the duo will walk out while the while baker pleads with them no deal they're not ready to do it yet fast scene at the park where stan's placing a bet on a payphone, and this looks awfully familiar like suspicious the, like the exact clip from too much too late when he leaves gamblers anonymous and places the bet but that was never seen hmm. in the regular season, so that wouldn't have been a repeat. It would have been setting up his gambling addiction. <laughs> was still there. So no one would have known if they stole the scene from the other episode. Nope. <laughs> At least until it ran on USA. And yeah. even then, who was watching it on USA? Come on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no one who watches USA watches NBC. Exactly. At Raul's, Tubbs walks in and Sonny's already like four deep at the bar. He's done. <laughs> Day drunk. <laughs> Sonny, it's 9 a.m. What are you doing? <laughs> and Tubbs pitches him, go and extract the guy. And his pitch is basically America. <laughs> <laughs> this is their chance to feel like they've made a big difference. It's also a suicide mission. And if they can just die on this trip, they'd kind of be okay with that, too. I mean, that's the message that's, that yeah, they both no, give you. Yeah, like, we might not survive this one. They're like, yeah, what a, who wants to live to be old anyway? I didn't think we are going to make retirement. In Sonny's case, he's got a little bit more to lose. He's got a nice boat. God knows he's got money after marrying that pop star that died. He's got a Lamborghini. We assume he has a kid somewhere. <laughs> uh, I'm just... <laughs> I'm saying he might have more to live for than, than maybe Tubbs. We don't even know if he has a residence. <laughs> hey, he's got a, a potential lady in New York, maybe. Okay. He doesn't have a car or a house or a couch <laughs> that, to sleep on. That marriage on, but proposal a, didn't lady. go so well. Question. Who knew that that caddy was also police property? I didn't know that. <laughs> Did he yeah. move to Miami in that caddy? No, he flew in. So, you know. <laughs> Tubbs says, you want to live forever? And Sonny eventually concedes and says, well, if you're going, I'm going to have to protect your ass while you're in Costa Morada. Yeah, so I guess I'm in too. He's going to get his butt shut off. He did not say ass, okay? <laughs> he said, pal, I got to protect your butt. Tubbs is also extraordinarily <laughs> happy with this decision. I know. Why is he so happy? <laughs> we have a long, long scene of a seaplane landing, and it just keeps going. And going. Yes. And going. Now let's get to the important part where Crockett and Tubbs get selected for additional screening. <laughs> I'm sorry. So we're going to have to look in your bags. They have some problem with INS, but <laughs> the tourism board comes to their rescue. They don't look like they stand out, though. Let's just get that straight. They don't look like they stick out like Thor Thumb, right? <laughs> Crockett with that hat it on. It doesn't look like Crockett's uh, searching for a missing jewel on the Nile or something. <laughs> He's even got a little mini ponytail. Here's what I know Sonny's there to do. When the INS asks him, we have to do an additional screening or TSA, he slams his fist down and says, ah, Carmen San Diego is going to escape again. <laughs> I, I really wish he was carrying a whip around. <laughs> At a different airfield, Hispanic Leota is talking to Borman's number two. Borman has been set up by his own captain. That's what's going on here. The captain says to Borman that he still intends to leave, but the cartel, his name is Montoya, but I'm going to continue to call him Leota, says to leave him, and then the rebels will be able to take over, but they need the government support in this. They can't have the rebels take over. That's how the cartel will stay in power down there and be, be able to keep doing what they do so instead kill him just kill him like that'll be better and i think what he's saying is that yeah. then the captain will become the leader of the country and, and then he'll be the like the military will still be in charge yeah it's just a facade they're not really personally be i think kote should just beam back to voyager and just forget this whole mess <laughs> is that who that is <laughs> <laughs> that is who that is. That's why he looks so familiar. I was like, oh my God, why does that guy look so familiar? Yes. What is he from? <laughs> Who's driving me insane? Funny story. He played the leader of a rebel in Star Trek. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I knew more about Star Trek than I thought I did, apparently. After a quick drive through the Costa Morada countryside, Ramirez, the person from the tourism board that you know helps the duo out at TSA. Not suspicious at all. No, way. not at all. Mm -hmm. He leaves the duo in the back of a car by some rebels. Who's got some sweet moles, by the way. He tells him, mm. stay here. They're mostly harmless. I'm going to go talk to our contact and then just fucks off down the street. <laughs> yes. 
It was so great. Just drives right up, him, hops out. I like, just go go in here for a minute. Then just books down the street. He doesn't even like go out the back door. He just goes right out the front. Like, sorry guys, screw you. Yeah. By the way, those people really don't like lime green cars. I don't so, know why they're so angry at them. <laughs> also, I love the footage that's not fake at all out the windows. That's not fake footage. That's real. real. It's real. real. It's almost as real as when 100%. they carried that car window down the street to record. <laughs> <laughs> the duo are able to jump out of their avocado green car just in time before it explodes and the rebels get there. And then a very tender lady comes pulling up. <laughs> Suspiciously tender, especially to tubs. <laughs> And rescues them. <laughs> Felicia says she's their real contact, and maybe you should check out at the DEA who actually set you up and they're able to escape. Yeah, but that's kind of what the last one said, and that car exploded. <laughs> True story. <laughs> Back at Borbin's palace, he gets an update from his finance officer, and Borbin just tells him to shut the hell up and kills him. So we need, hey, people, we need to fill two hours of TV time here. Stretch it. Yes. <laughs> at the rebel camp. Back Felicia. at the rebel camp. Trying to feel bad for the henchmen in this episode. First, we got to see Spanish Ray Liotta's guys have to hump bags of something into a plane. And now we're at the rebel camp. And what are they doing? They're moving crates from one spot to another. I feel bad for these guys. Busy work. Just keep them with their busy work. You got some dirt in Boston's yeah. hole there. <laughs> exactly. Put dirt in my hole. Get yes. dirt out of my hole. The Rebels know exactly what Borbin's schedule is. They're very organized, well-prepared. She, Valicia, takes Tubbs on a tour of their escape route. Yeah, that's well, what you call it, a tour, right? <laughs> she calls herself a, a nun. driving. <laughs> <laughs> what a way to start a vacation. Meanwhile, Sonny goes to like this hotel bar oh. thing. And he goes I think he talk- was looking for a bar. I think he just bumped into Bi- Bianca uh, on accident. He talks to... G- Jimenez and Bianca, he wants them to start the internal revolution tonight. They're on a very tight schedule. They need to get to the boat by 10 p.m. in order for them to be able to get out of here. Jimenez is very surprised that it'll be ramped up that fast. He's not sure he can actually get it done, but Bianca says, no, we will be able to get it done. Trust me, I'm Morbin's daughter. I don't want him to die. <laughs> Love Jimenez's reaction like ah oh, i was thinking like next month sometime like yeah, that's like, awful that's kinda, quick yeah that's real fast i don't think i can get it done then <laughs> this is outside of our normal scope we're gonna have to send you an invoice <laughs> back at the rebel camp tubs is still talking to felicia says that in the bronx they have oh, similar oh, problems his magic he's trying to get sweaty he's trying it but it's not gonna work she's a nun she don't get sweaty with him <laughs> it's funny because his action because like you're a nun Damn, Doesn't feel just... dirty for all that uh, <laughs> hitting on her he was just doing. He thought he was going to get something, but no. Nope. He says they have similar problems to what they're having to cost them water in the Bronx. I'm sure it's the same tubs. I'm sure. On the I'm sure, but also, them. you don't live in the Bronx right now. You live in Miami. So what kind of problems do you have on your street? You live in Miami. <laughs> <laughs> she says, it sounds like you love that place. Wink. <laughs> Wink. Tubbs mm-hmm. says, yes, he does. It sounds kind of like he wants to go back to New York. Hmm. Wink. <laughs> Sonny comes back, says everything's ready to go. So now we go to the battlefield, and it's match to level fighting scenes. And it's, you know, some people are dying and stuff, but you don't see like anything too gruesome or battlefieldy. <laughs> <laughs> Tubbs does find Felicia tending to a wounded soldier, and that's when you find out she's a nun. And he can't bone her now. <laughs> <laughs> nope. Well, not tell Let's anybody. Maybe big mission, secretly. Big extraction. <laughs> <laughs> he goes and tells Sonny about being. <laughs> Not what's happening on the battlefield, but that she's a nun. Yeah, so you're like, wow, really? Yeah. I thought I was going to bone her too, but no, I guess not. <laughs> Concerned about Leota and him being able to throw a wrench into their plans tonight, but everything is lined up. Concerned about G- Jimenez and how nervous he was about starting tonight, but everything looks like it's a go. This is their shot. Back at the at Bourbon's palace, Bianca stumbles on the captain, giving orders to kill Bourbon to and the Americans to some other people that work under him yeah because you don't talk about your plans with the door open like what kind of idiot are you <laughs> close the door <laughs> that signals it's a secret the conversation <laughs> later that night sunny's wig plus tubs are trying to sneak in by climbing over the wall <laughs> all you can see is when he runs yes. that hair it's like how is it staying on is it really real why did you wear the ponytail while you were doing the mission that seems like that's more 
I, I have long hair. I know what it's like to run with your hair in your face. You put it in the ponytail. <laughs> uh, well, when they get there, he posts up and he's like bending down looking at the blueprints. And I'm sorry, these are corny blueprints. I mean, they might as well have just drawn it on a napkin. <laughs> like climb over the wall by the big rock. <laughs> like drawn in crayon there's your rock of course they don't listen inside the captain gets a visit from bianca who tries to seduce him but clumsily knocks his gun onto the floor and instead of lying and saying i wasn't trying to do that i think my ass hit it (laughs) she says you're evil and i was trying to kill you and then he says okay well i'll forgive you for this just stay here yeah, I won't kill you. Just stay here. I will say that scene took a drastic turn. It started out like a be- like the beginning of a porn and just turned <laughs> into some really kind of awkward, like, oh, I'm sorry, I tried to kill you. <laughs> you can just tell that the captain is making decisions while he has a boner. That's why he's not willing to kill her. <laughs> We'll revisit this in a half hour. (laughs) I was going to say, but what kind of woman can't distract him? Like, oops, I dropped the gun. Well, that's when you go for the (laughs) blowjob. Sorry. (laughs) Outside, the duo are sneaking around with nothing but white people going into the palace. I don't know what what he's selling. What kind of palace is this? Avon party or something at the general's palace. They're all watching like big band movies on the big screen. (laughs) Full of white people. All the white people in this country. Perfect English. They're watching. Also, why did they not send the CIA expert for this? Don't they have someone they know, like well, Castillo, I, that could sneak in, be a ninja? Get who's him? also Hispanic? Yeah. <laughs> well, he wouldn't blend in at the Thank party, you. That is exactly what I was thinking. He wouldn't blend in, though. He'd be I, I was too thinking brown. that the whole time. <laughs> can you imagine? He'd just be, like, splayed out in the ceiling, waiting for them to come in and get it. <laughs> Doing the splits across walls. <laughs> uh, that brings up a good question, though, guys. Tubbs and Crockett were picked up off the street. Does Castillo even know where his two crime fighters are at this point? No. <laughs> <laughs> he figures it out by the end, right when they quit. The captain comes to Borbin, who's really enjoying that Glenn Miller orchestra performance. Yeah. Pulls him outside and says, you have to talk, I have to talk to you right now. But that's when the duo come running over and they save him saying, hey, your captain's about to kill you. And Borbin's like, no way. My best friend. We've known each other for years. The captain tries to pull his gun out as Bianca shows up and the duo shoot and kill the captain. But they have silencers on their gun, so they would be able to escape silently into the night. But the captain isn't actually dead. He sits up, fires a couple shots, starts the Donnybrook of soldiers just pouring out of all the buildings, and everyone's left to shoot their way out. Felicia comes pulling up. Yeah. Everyone jumps into the back, but Felicia takes one, and she goes down. More than one. <laughs> she took quite a few. <laughs> I feel bad guy they shoot at the gate, because I feel like he's just there to open the gate. Like, he's not really kind of... <laughs> Like, he made no effort to try and shoot them at any point. He was just confused with what was going on. Like, I felt bad for him. I really <laughs> felt bad that Tubbs' girlfriend, the nun, got shot. But, man, how cold is that that Tubbs, that they just leave her? Crockett's like, she's dead, man. Let's go. Like, how do you know she, how do they always know when these people are dead? They never check their pulse. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't know you were also a doctor, Sonny, from sight. You can go, like, she's not breathing. She's dead. Let's go. <laughs> Yeah, it's just cold-blooded. They just left her there. They left a nun to die. <laughs> yeah, they're going to burn. Going yep. to hell. They make it to the boat, and the next day we see them hanging out. And I hope this goes well for Sonny, because things didn't go so well last time he was on a boat like this. <laughs> just, you know. I'm just saying. I mean, hey, <laughs> last time he was on a boat, he was with Joey. So it went great, right? <laughs> He was hanging out with Joey Harden. That wasn't at all a mistake. Borbin is stable but bleeding. They're heading for the seaplane, but Sonny says where our luck has been going and how badly we've been set up by the DEA. We might as well just take this boat all the way to Florida. We have enough gas to get there in just a couple of days. Bianca comes down and See, thanks him for saving her dad. He's not happy. He says, oh, you feel too much. You're too close to people. See, I feel like at this point, having someone like Jimmy flying you in on the seaplane would, would, would have been beneficial because then you know you could trust Jimmy. You could just go to the seaplane like you were supposed to. <laughs> Meanwhile, in Miami, Baker is talking to Highsmith and Baker is happy that Bourbon is out, that the duo have him, but Highsmith isn't happy knowing that Bourbon is going to be hidden on the streets of Miami and is going to turn the area into a war zone while Central American gangs are out looking for Bourbon, which he's got a solid point. It teams. That's a bunch of fakes. <laughs> he doesn't really care, though. 
he has political aspirations. He doesn't care about the city at all. He's also getting money from Montoya. Yeah, he so. doesn't, like, literally, he doesn't care. He just, he's just a big <laughs> fronter. He doesn't care about any of it. Baker says, deal with it, and if you want to be a real Republican, you just shut your mouth. <laughs> no comment on that one. <laughs> Highsmith leaves. He's unhappy, but not protesting. He's sulking. <laughs> and then we have a flyover, a Miami montage. Miami's a solid city. It's nice. <laughs> <laughs> uh-huh. Did you know they have all those buildings? <laughs> also, there's some water. <laughs> there's some boats. <laughs> <laughs> they're at a church, maybe, meeting with Baker, the duo are. I don't know where Hotel, they're Hotel, maybe. Uh, uh, I think it's a church. No, I don't think it's a church, is it? I think uh, the last of the flyover, you see like a steeple, and then we the, jump to there, so they're like in a church. The la- church is the last place you'd expect some deal to go down, right? <laughs> yeah. Mm. Baker is complaining, like, why did you guys not take the seaplane? I've been waiting days. <laughs> you, yes. you were literally on the slow boat. Do you, do you know how much that seaplane costs a day? <laughs> It's still sitting out there. <laughs> so he says, your plan sucked. We got set up and we have Bourbon stashed. We don't trust you, which they never should trust the DEA because the DEA has always been dirty. It has never worked out that the DEA has been on their side. Nobody's ever on their side. Like their own police, <laughs> their own police chief, their the CIA, IAB, nothing. Nobody wants. But you know what this means, guys. Now they're on protection detail. We all know how... Protection detail goes with these guys. Like this is where they didn't want to be. Well, that's where Bourbon doesn't want to be, <laughs> for sure. Quick scene at an airfield where we see Ray Liotta get off an airplane at the safe house. Jesus Christ, what a safe house! Where did they get these things from? That's like a rich person's house. Even Tub says he got lost trying to find it later. Bourbon is mad at Bianca. He thinks that she's siding with. The Americans and Vice angry. He storms off. The ladies and Sand are there hanging out, babysitting Bourbon and Bianca. The duo show up and then shift rotate. The ladies leave. Sand goes and like just chills in his room for a few hours or so. <laughs> He's not invited to have the deep conversations that Sonny and Tubbs have together. So excited to see the rest of the squad. And then it's like you get 30 seconds of the ladies. Then Stan walks away, and then it's like back to Tubbs and Crockett's show. Later that night, a few ninjas hop over the wall of the safe house, and they're going to go break in to go take care of Bourbon. Inside, Sonny and Tubbs talking. Tubbs is upset about Felicia. I mean, she was a tender lady. Tubbs yeah. is broken up. Just because she was a nun now doesn't mean she would have been a nun forever. <laughs> Maybe he thought he could turn her. <laughs> Tubbs's primary concern is that Felicia is another example of that any of them can go at any time. You never know what's going to happen in this line of work. Sonny says you can't think about that while you're on the job. Like the last thing I need is you being distracted by dying because we're like, we're literally on a suicide we're mission. We're literally going to die. <laughs> <laughs> he calls this survivor guilt and says he saw it a lot in Vietnam too, which true. That would be true. Right, yep, yep. <laughs> Got me there, Sonny. Oh, yeah, that's right. He was in Vietnam. (laughs) (laughs) Sonny sees some people sneaking around outside. The team jumps into action just in time. Shootout. Even Stan comes running in and gets one. They're able to take them all down. The team runs upstairs. Hell yeah. Vice team hit squad zero. (laughs) Wait. Where's the general? (laughs) He is long gone. Because he knew about their protection. He was already gone before they even hit squad even came. He's like, I'm getting the hell out of here. I don't trust these people. Later, Sand is go- tells Crocky he's going to go off and go find the coroner. That way they can come collect all these bodies. Yeah, it's I just mean, like all, these just pile all up. over the floor in here. It's, it's a mess. Someone come in here and clean this place up. <laughs> And say the only person outside of the house that knew that they were there was Castillo. And we all know he's clean. Well, of course he's That clean. means there's got to be someone inside the house that was able to tell Leota where they were hiding out. Bianca says she did hear her dad make a call, didn't know what it was about, and didn't know who it was. So I think it's really mad and shows her some of the bodies that, and says, Borbin made a deal. I am here to make sure that he sticks to it. And Bianca eventually says, well, while I was in school in Switzerland, my dad used to send me checks from this bank in Miami. Maybe that had something to do with it. I was waiting for the bank. It was the bank Bank of America. <laughs> Meanwhile, at Stan's place, Stan comes home and finds Leota and his muscle at his house. Surprised it's not Holly he is. At first I thought Stan was jamming the Genesis. (laughs) And then I realized it was just the background music. (laughs) 
<laughs> Montoya Loyota, says he bought Stan's gambling debt and wants to know where Borbin is. Stan says he won't talk, but then after a little bit of slapping around, says, you have to let me go because if I don't report back to work, they're going to know something's up. Uncle, uncle. <laughs> the next day at Banco Libre, which, you know, if you're trying to figure out a where. Bank, which bank they go to. Which bank they go to. Um, well, let's start with the ones that have, have like, Spanish names. Latin. Yeah. <laughs> I think that bank might have a Latin connection. I'm not maybe, quite sure. Uh, you know, maybe. The people are racing over there because they got a call saying that the courier for Bourbon is there. They're trying to stall her so that when they get there, they can follow her to see where she's going. That way they can meet up with Bo Borbin. She comes out. And essentially, we all we learn about this character is that she's a gold digger and that gold digger's got to dig. <laughs> also, she does not dress like any courier I've ever seen. <laughs> what is she carrying? By the way, Genesis still blazing in the background. <laughs> She leaves the duo follow, and so does another car. Nice police work, guys. Yeah, where are you on that one? And they head over to this apartment. Borbid, who looks like that's like his natural habitat. He's like in just this sleeveless like, shirt. Yeah. No, sitting he's on in the like couch. a white beater. Like, yeah. Yeah, in like white pants. He's sitting there. He looks like he fits in naturally in that part of my yeah, Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> she says she's happy with all the money. Look at all the money. I can't believe how much there is here. We can go anywhere. And Bourbon says, yeah, I'll send for you. Yeah, he's like, I'm going here. I'll send for you once I get there. Don't worry about a thing. The view will come busting in. Bourbon says, I'm not leaving. I saw what your protection was like. I'm not saying anywhere with Touché. you. Touche. <laughs> he does yes. have a point. <laughs> they can't argue and hey, that one. <laughs> strange it, and hey, strange enough, they show up and immediately a hit team shows up as well. Not, yeah. <laughs> Shootout. Aired. The vice team wins again. And they also learned Thanks that to Crockett's karate roll. <laughs> yeah. He did. That was some karate roll he did. They also found out that the only person that Borbin called was his accountant, Max Flynn. Lock that one away. You might want that one later. <laughs> <laughs> Back at the precinct, Dad's working late. He has called Stan in for a meeting. He's got something special to talk to him about. He closes the door. Goes over and cold, even though they're the only ones there. Even the janitor can't hear this conversation. <laughs> he looks so disappointed. <laughs> he is. It hurt him more than it hurt Stan, okay? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Castiel reluctantly says that the duo got bourbon, but there was a shootout. They got somehow they knew where they were going. And Stan is a compulsive gambler. Did Montoya get to you yeah just and, tell me like just tell me now and we'll we'll deal with it like i know i should have what what got me was he was like i've known about this for a while i should have addressed it already but like no crap you should have addressed where have you been castillo yeah. <laughs> where have you been the last five episodes <laughs> been, like testifying somewhere in dc i think just saying, if you were really worried about him, why didn't you help him? Nobody helped him. They just left him know. hanging out to know. dry. Maybe in a later episode, we'll see what he was doing in the... Oh, wait. <laughs> Stan angrily denies it, says he's clean now, and he would never give up his partners. So he's only partly lying, then. Oh, well, yeah, it's like two, three, two out of three of them are lies. Okay, Stan, you're not trustworthy. And Castillo agrees, says, I can't take the risk. You are suspended until the end of this case. And he's like mad about it. Oh, fuck, that's so great. <laughs> <laughs> so now we're going to go to this junkyard slash warehouse down by the wharf. Hispanic Leota pulls up. His partner walks over. They says that the detective set up the last hit, but don't mess it up this time. But we find out later as they go inside of the warehouse, and they see that Stan has wired the entire place up and has a pre-roll video on a TV. And Stan didn't actually sell them out. Nope. That they just got lucky following... Tubbs and Crockett, who are just too oblivious <laughs> so, to people. It was Tubbs and Crockett. Yes. <laughs> Guys, I, I think Stan's losing mind. He's slipping. I mean, he wired the whole place with the explosives, you know, and all the way to the end of the scene. It looks like he's going to blow these guys up. I mean, maybe he kind of should have blown them up because, I mean, uh, at the very end when they come out, well, he. He just shoots them, and it's like, well, it would, probably would have been cleaner if you just blown them up, you know? <laughs> this is also totally the same idea that that guy had that was like the bug expert, and he had his house all wired up. He had the TV screens, and he would talk to you mm -hmm. when you came walking in and stuff like that. He 
and Sam oh, was yeah, that's right. deeply embedded in that episode too. They needed him to like yeah. sniff out other bugs and things like that. So he he learned from the best. Also, like Stan just like you're saying, John, he just murders them all while he's suspended. Yeah. He's not actually a police officer right now. Uh, he doesn't murder no. them. He just does what Miami Vice did. They just kill people. <laughs> Those people should have just left. They should not have fought back. The next day, Tubbs and Crockett are driving, talking. I'm tired of dodging bullets. It's getting really old. They're going to go see Izzy, who's now selling crystals and wants his customer to come to a clothing optional retreat that he's putting on. Those are some crystals. <laughs> <laughs> it's important to have oneness with the fish. Because <laughs> he's not just selling crystals, by the way. He's selling crystals and fishing lures. <laughs> Like you do. Because they go together. So, um, yeah, exactly. Spiritual fishing lures. Guys, this interaction kind of put an ex- exclamation point on how burned out the Vice Squad is. Even Izzy's burned out with dealing with them. Yes, because they start to muscle Izzy. And Sonny is pushing around, threatening him. And Izzy says, don't be a badge flasher with a power complex. He's so tired of dealing with them. And Sonny says, fine, I can't do it anymore. Just take the money. What is Montoya doing? Izzy shocked that that's how this conversation goes says johnny miranda is recruiting an army for leota and then sunny says well good and he takes his money back and then they just leave i just i hate seeing the i, I hate thinking that that's the way their relationship ends with izzy basically crockett just being a dick to him like you like, izzy was so surprised when he just gave him that money like are you actually gonna let me keep this money i know he's so tired of dealing with them he de- but he also you can tell like he didn't feel like he needed to be pushed around because they're like friends. If they just would have asked and talked to him like a normal person, he would have been willing to help them. Mm -hmm. This is also the last time we see Izzy. Which is why I said it was kind of sad to see that that's the way their relationship ended. Everything we've been through with Izzy, the hope was that, you know, maybe Izzy hit the lottery or something or, you know, that would be a positive interaction. But really, it just kind of felt kind of sad. Yeah. Yeah, I know. I, I'm really confused. And I, I'm emotionally confused on how to handle this scene, knowing that it's the last time we see Izzy and what he really means to the Vice team. So now Tubbs is off to go see Miranda. He comes into his office, says, I know you're helping Montoya, and starts really threatening him. But that's when Montoya comes in and they capture Tubbs. At the precinct that night, Son- Sonny is working late. Trudy comes in with some papers and says, I'm here if you need me. He's like, okay, Ooh. see you later. Boy, Trudy's looking good. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you. I could have gone for some more Trudy in this episode. <laughs> and that's the last time you see Trudy. Yeah. Poor Gina didn't yeah, even I get two, talk up, about two seasons. <laughs> <laughs> phone rings. It's Tubbs. Says, don't listen to him. And then Leota grabs the phone and says, if he doesn't get bourbon in 12 hours, Tubbs is dead chump so then we go over to high smith's house chief comes in and sunny's waiting for him sunny says he got a phone call from Tubbs that he's in danger he needs to turn over bourbon high smith says uh that's sorry awful. that's awful uh, i don't know what you want me to do about it sunny says you know where Tubbs is and i can prove it because you have the same accountant as montoya does and when i went and talked to max flynn that accountant I was able to get a lot of information about how Montoya is giving you money and the types of things that you own from that money. To really set this scene up, when the commish comes in, whole room's dark, Sonny's just kind of sitting there. It has a very meat fondler episode feel <laughs> to it. And Crockett has a very meat fondler Crockett intensity in this scene. Not saying that there's any relation to meat fondler crockett and intense <laughs> crockett sunny is somewhere between meat fondler and burnett because yeah. he goes off on high smith and says i am crazy watch me blow your brains out all over the wall right I'll here i'll make a blood painting on your wall <laughs> which i think would have enhanced that place because it was pretty plain <laughs> and, <laughs> and then saying. i'm gonna fondle meat <laughs> <laughs> then i'm gonna get into your flour and spread it all over your kitchen <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be a terrible mess. I'll never clean it up. <laughs> so now we're going to go to this exchange at this trailer. Montoya is there with his team along with Tubbs. So they're just chilling. <laughs> High Smith comes waltzing and says he wants to talk to Montoya. Stan and Sunny are watching way far away with sniper rifles. By the way, there's other police officers even further they away. They haven't got there yet. That's <laughs> what they're saying. That Right when they get there... Stan says, like, what is Highsmith doing? He hasn't he's not waiting for backup to get here. He he decided to do that on his own. But 
how come no one addresses that Stan is there with it? Okay, what? <laughs> Did, like, how come Dad wasn't there? So were the duo just? I mean, like Crockett was just doing this whole thing by himself. Like he got he got the SWAT team together, but he didn't have Dad, and Dad didn't relay the message that Stan was possibly crooked. Or is he just like forgiven because they figured out like no, it wasn't him that did it. So then that's just, like we're just supposed to know that. <laughs> well, Stan murdered the guys that made him do it, so he's all everything's all forgiven, so he can come back and murder more people. I guess. So, or I'm let's get back like, to does, does Crockett not know that? <laughs> <laughs> Let, let's get to Highsmith, you know, being like, "Hey, Montoya, it's Bob. Come outside and let's <laughs> chat." <laughs> Highsmith says he wants to see Tubbs. Montoya says no way, but they eventually concede that he's going to see Tubbs first, and then he'll be able to turn over Borbin. Sonny fires off a fantastic shot from a distance to kill the man that's holding Tubbs. Tubbs jumps off. Shootout starts. That's when the military, whoever they are, show up yeah, like and just absolutely Dude. destroy <laughs> oh <my God>. yes. <laughs> It literally was that not wasn't... standing. And the walls were gone from all the bullets. <laughs> they clearly didn't pick a very good to stand to make a stand. They Bonnie and Clyde the crap out of that little <laughs> job trailer. By the time they were done, yeah, the whole thing just collapses. <laughs> It is Swiss cheese is an understatement no, to what like they do to that thing. It's like colander. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like I am it. surprised it didn't explode. <laughs> Actually, that would have been more. <laughs> that makes more sense than the plane exploding later on. <laughs> Driving, the duo have Borbin. And they're going to go to this exchange location. They get stopped by cops again because now we're thinking like, okay, it's almost the end of the episode. This is when they're going to turn over Borbin and then everything's going to be good to go. But they get stopped, and the cops say that Baker wants to drop to a new location. Sonny doesn't buy it, pulls out his gun, and says, no way, pal. But then Ramen comes up out of nowhere and says, uh-uh, we're taking Borbin. Pull everyone out of the car. He shoots and kills Borbin, put the body in the trunk, and then him and the cops all drive away, leaving the duo there alone. And again... Another one of their high-valued bad guys gets away. But they are so protecting people. This is ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> they don't, what kind of cops I'm are sorry. those? Like, they don't look anything like the Miami-Dade Police Department. So what are they? they They're got, wearing, like, a weird uniforms. <laughs> they got witness jacked at the Mayberry <laughs> Police Department. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> They are terrible at this protection thing. I, I Seriously. And I mean, I, at one point, a little earlier in the episode, when they were talking to the CIA guy, they practically put their badges on it. <laughs> so now at the Metro Dade headquarters, Sonny is looking over paperwork, says that they found Borbin's body charred like Gina's meatloaf. Harsh, Ouch. man. Ow. <laughs> and she's not even in this episode very much. <laughs> Add an insult to injury. I she only got one you. scene. <laughs> he sleeps with her and he hates her meatloaf. <laughs> Sonny stops in the paper, says there's something fishy. Nothing from the coroner says that there was a gunshot wound. Then when he calls the coroner, like, Borbin, what the hell is that? <laughs> She's like, I don't know what you're talking about. You've been really slow here. I've had no dead bodies. <laughs> I got a hoodwink. <laughs> fake report and all. Who jumped off the fake report? <laughs> so now the duo are going to go over to the fiance's apartment and just blast in that door she's there still in her lingerie getting drunk mad because borbin actually stood her up too and she says now yeah, well, you guys got hit worse because he hired baker and ramen and so you guys got suckered you look like idiots basically. You guys are coming and going and i'm the one sitting in my underwear but you look like morons <laughs> <laughs> she also says that borbin has dirt on a high high ranking official which made me wonder if he has dirt on donald trump too <laughs> <laughs> just by the way to jump back a couple of scenes highsmith does get killed in yes, that trailer scene we're so busy he's talking about how destroyed the trailer got that we forgot because, he immediately got shot <laughs> yeah he, he just immediately shot and killed and the highsmith story never was a thing no, and they don't Never even like. Came back. They don't even back, yeah. go back over. They dead. Oh. They just like mm -hmm. leave. Like oh, he's dead. they were more interested in doing a recreation of the Predator scene. They <laughs> were about the Highsmith moment. Um, they needed all those. I guess shots it was a bad in. idea. I guess it was a bad idea to walk uh, right up to the door of the bad guys and just <laughs> ask them to come out. That was going to end in a gun battle. So after getting the fiance to talk, the duo are back at the precinct. They get ready to like, call out some feds, list out all this information that they know now, and then go take care of Borbin because they know 
where he's going to be leaving. There's some back and forth between Sonny and Rico about, hey, this was our promise. We were going to bring down the cartel. Even if it's a suicide mission, this is what we're supposed to do. And Tubbs is visibly scared. He does not want to go do this. Well, and I understand because one of the things they're talking about is that they, they're probably going to lose their jobs because they're going against federal agencies uh, orders to do this and at one point crockett even says who cares about a pension which i get for crockett who was married to a pop star who died and <laughs> left him all of her money a pension probably doesn't mean much but for tubs a pension might might be important he doesn't Valerie's have that pop star either. money to fall back on <laughs> <laughs> okay, you keep saying that he clearly has no money and at the end he doesn't have a boat he's not going to have the lambo and he's going to go live somewhere in the south so he ain't got we no don't money. know where he's buying you you telling me a rich pop star like caitlin didn't have a prenup okay he ain't getting any money <laughs> he got no money from her they were only married for like three weeks <laughs> she was murdered he should have got everything that that trumps but it's his the, fault uh, she got murdered <laughs> I think her family probably took him to court and took all the money. <laughs> I'm just saying, saw what happened to his partner, uh, his former partner. I get why he's scared. <laughs> now we have a getting ready montage, like commando style getting ready. They're armed to the teeth. Loading montage. How many guns do you think they need for this rampage, by the way? <laughs> I mean, they, they must have loaded about 15 guns. Well, they use like 15 when they get there. <laughs> And so now we have this driving montage, which is almost identical to the first driving montage we had in the pilot episode. Where they're going to go get Calderon. They're going to go get Calderon, and Sunny even stops and calls Caroline, thinking that he's going to die. Tubbs is kind of doing the same thing, but telling that to Sunny. He's mm -hmm. scared about dying. Same camera shots. Same plane they're going to go chase. <laughs> How do they know what airport, especially since Miami has like 45 airports, <laughs> how do they know what airport he's going to be at? She, The girlfriend told them when she was, when she was drunk, laying mm -hmm. in her underwear. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so like the girl, so like he skipped out on the girlfriend, but like she still she knows knew where, where he, he is. <laughs> yeah, like she, she was just too drunk to chase him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh, she was I feel in her like underwear, that's weird. So, like, know. if she just showed up at the airport, she might have actually been allowed to get on the plane. <laughs> well, I mean, there's no security at those airports. <laughs> those seaplanes just do whatever the hell they want. They just take off <laughs> random times. There's no, like, TSA to check on them or do anything. I don't know about that, though, because they get to the airport and... Borbin jumps in the plane. He's like, quick, start the plane. Go, go. <laughs> and so the seaplane takes off, but then there's this whole shootout. And then like five minutes later, the plane finally starts to take off. And they, it's like they were last in line to take off. <laughs> I just think those seaplanes like take a lot to get ready. <laughs> They're like in the water doing circles. They had to do a lap, to a lap before they could get it going fast enough. <laughs> They're like, get up the speed. Like, okay, we're almost there. One more lap around, then we can take off. The duo go running headlong straight into the line of fire. They, I, they expect it to die. They're running into the gunfire. Guns in both hands, just firing as fast as they can as they run. They just happen oh, to get oh, yeah. through, and Tubbs only being shot in the arm. But they were on a full-blown death wish. But that's never addressed again that he got shot. <laughs> but then at the end of all of it, they start firing at the plane taking off. <laughs> and with what appears to be a handgun and maybe <laughs> like an Uzi or something, <laughs> they blow up the plane. I think that's possible. And then they're like shocked that they did. They're like looking at the guns like... <laughs> What kind of bullets are these? <laughs> That's my favorite part. They just put, like post up at the end of the runway and like start shooting it. Like th that th would not take down a plane in real life, but apparently in Miami Vice. I mean, birds can go. take planes down. Well, that is true. Yeah. <laughs> so they've successfully stopped one. One of them didn't get away, unlike the countless others that have been able to just fly away. And then they, they got never him. Get, did, they he did. actually got one. And you're right, John. They are shocked. Just standing there like, oh, my God, I can't believe we actually did that. <laughs> I was say, they're shocked they got him. <laughs> I feel like I got to burst everyone's bubble because they did the whole extraction thing because they were going to get information crucial to taking down <laughs> yes. the cartel. Yeah, so they're not going to get any of the information Blowing up the now. airplane with bourbon on it just kills him. They still don't get the information to take down the cartel. No one wins in this scenario. The they, CIA doesn't win. They don't win. 
Nobody wins. Bourbon well, doesn't win. win. They finished it in Miami by style. They murdered everybody on that plane. <laughs> no, he won't talk, but that's okay because no one will ever talk again. <laughs> he lost a boat, Lambo, and they lost a caddy. Like, I, no one won here. <laughs> in a week, they're going to regret this. The next morning, Baker comes pulling up with all of his DEA homies, and they're armed to the teeth as well. And Baker says, what the hell did you do? <laughs> Sonny <laughs> and Tubbs defend their actions, saying that you can't just let these people get away with whatever they want. Baker says, you don't even know what you're dealing with. This is the new reality. We make deals. We protect America. And that involves also helping people who aren't our friends. But if we can get information out of them or stop them from doing something or whatever it is, like we just make deals. That's what we do. But Sonny and, and Somehow Tubbs, this is all about real estate. <laughs> you lightweights. Sonny and Rico don't want to hear anything of it. They're walking away. Baker says, this isn't over. I'm going to have your badge for this. They stop, look at each other, and then just toss their badges onto the ground. That's when we finally have another Castillo moment where he comes pulling up. Now he parks off to the side. <laughs> yeah, he wanna, doesn't want to get involved, really. He wants to make sure he can get out. Like, he's not blocked in or anything. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to park way over here. Like, Castillo's, like, rolling up. Castillo's been out all driving around, like, where the hell are my damn detectives? <laughs> like, they keep not showing up for work. They just disappear. He rolls up, and he sees with the other badges. He's like, hey. It's like, wait, wait, what the hell's going on? <laughs> yeah, because he was like, no, don't do it. All I have is the ladies and they just file papers. <laughs> not real cops. <laughs> I don't even have Stan. I don't have anyone to bug. <laughs> and they they are totally like, sorry, Lieutenant, we quit this bitch. He's like, I'll stick up for you. Like, I'll, you know, I'll have your backs. And they're like, no, it's too late. He's like, okay. <laughs> they get the major death stare. That's the, that's the last thing we get at Castillo is the ultimate, the ultimate evil eye that he gives to Crockett as they get in the car. All the shit I've had to put up with for you two, and you're just going to walk out on me? When we fade back in, we're at the St. Vitus dance. Sonny is moving out. This is not even his boat. He's got nothing. <laughs> no alligator, no boat, I have a... <laughs> no car. I have ones to ride away with this scene. He is wearing a Jayhawks t-shirt, a Kansas Jayhawks, Rock Chalk Jayhawk. He was a former Gator, right? He played yes. football for the Gators, yeah. Florida Gators. Yep. So why so... would he be wearing... Uh, Kansas Jayhawk t-shirt, guys. Interesting story about that. That's where Don Johnson, Johnson went, went to, to college. School. Yeah, I knew that already. <laughs> oh! He had to sneak that so in there. he got like amnesia? <laughs> Tubbs comes pulling up in a cab. <laughs> he even got his car. <laughs> Fair part because then the cab all smiling like, I don't even have a car. I never had a place to live. <laughs> I got nothing. <laughs> Sunny, surprised to see him. Figured he'd be halfway back to New York. He's happy to see him. Just in case you didn't know, Tubbs is going to New York. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's, you know, if he can afford a ticket. I mean, he used most of his money for that cab. Yeah, he never got his money out of that bank either. No. <laughs> <laughs> he smashed up all those <laughs> displays and everything. He never got his money out of This is why I think that Crockett actually got money out of that whole Caitlin deal. Because his plan is to just head to the airport. And just bounce around. You know, like that guy from Kung Fu. Just go around helping people. <laughs> They're all smiles. Tub says he is going back to New York. So he says he's just going to go south. I don't know how much further south you get than Miami. You know, kind of surprising. He doesn't say that he's going to go to Caroline and his son, maybe. Because I we... Jerry. Um, Barry. <laughs> Billy. 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 <laughs> <laughs> because I mean, there's that whole scene where they're like loading up the ammo, and they look in. If you look into their their lockers, Crockett didn't have a picture of Caitlin. He had pictures of Caroline and Billy. Billy's his name, by the way. B i l l y. Billy. <laughs> I've always known his name. You two guys <laughs> can't remember anything. <laughs> and that was something that we were missing. Is that in that locker scene? That's really powerful because you see, and they make a point to show that. That's only pictures of Caroline and Jerry inside. I mean, Jimmy inside <laughs> of the locker. And how come there's nothing in Tubbs' locker? It's like a picture because of Because Valerie car. took the pictures with her. <laughs> yeah, exactly. The picture of the Cadillac. <laughs> Him smiling, holding the stuff up. <laughs> they say they're going to miss each other. Um, Handshake over the car. Sonny says, sad. at least let me give you a ride to the airport in my stolen car. Because it's not his car. Yes. <laughs> and then we get some panning shots of the car. And Sonny says, hey, Tubbs, 
You ever consider a career in Southern law enforcement? Just like the end of the pilot. Yep. So, and then we finish up the episode with the montage of clips from the show. Actually, it's actually to a pretty good song. I mean, it goes on for like five, ten minutes. Yeah, I, I have a few notes on it. There's a lot of clips of Alive Zito and also Dead Zito, oh, you ow, assholes. Why? Did, why? <laughs> I love the clips of <laughs> Zito, but not the dead ones. <laughs> and all the clips of them blowing people up, those are good. Look at these people we murdered. <laughs> we blew up that I plane. Was... We blew up that boat. We blew up that one house that one time. <laughs> we blew up that house boat. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta touch all the bases. <laughs> I was surprised by the, the Zito scenes because there was zero reference to Zito in the final season, including the finale. Like, no nods, no nothing. You exactly. Know? I mean, a little bit. I'm sorry. There was the snow globes with Stan, but yeah, exactly. we have but no idea what's going to happen to Stan, gambling Stan, now that he's unemployed and presumably still owes thousands of dollars to bookies. You also see Don Johnson's hair change throughout the season. Like, oh, it's got so bad in the last yeah, season. Yeah, why did he oh let him grow God, his hair like so that? so bad. <laughs> <laughs> Plenty of Izzy throughout the final uh-huh, montage, of but no Nook Man. Uh, yeah, that's right, because he's not important. <sighs> no one wanted the Nook Man. He was never important, and especially <laughs> since Don Johnson didn't like him. <laughs> we also get a clip of Elvis. Elvis! <laughs> he's not shoes. <laughs> no, we learned that the flare gun is the most dangerous gun in all of ice. Well, it shoots down planes, yeah, of course. <laughs> you guys don't know that yet? Yeah, we, also- we got a pick of Elvis, but we didn't get a pick of his pet Jaguar. <laughs> <laughs> I, I want to pick of my Jag. <laughs> Uh, Morris. Yeah, yeah. Morris was an important. Morris, of thank you. Good Morris. Yeah. <laughs> I can't believe I forgot Morris's name. I mean, with him being so famous, you know. <laughs> and of course, I had to squeeze in that moment that Jimmy Smith got blown up in the pilot. But they didn't even show him, though. <laughs> Can you imagine what a different show would have been if Jimmy Smith and him were partners through the whole thing? Oh, my God. <laughs> Maybe they'd let Jimmy Smith sing. <laughs> And then it fades out, and that's the end of the episode. After you see Dead Zito again. <laughs> yeah, you see Dead Zito a couple more times. <laughs> and that's it forever. That's it. We're done. Forever, ever. That's forever, ever. ever. <laughs> Miami Vice episode. We have we did it. We did it. All of them. Every single we episode. But before we get too much celebration, let's go give our final thoughts on this episode. And don't forget, we're going to be back for our Season 5 recap and then all of Vice recap. So before we get too celebratory, let's go give our final thoughts on this episode, because this has been a long one, and I'm sure, sure, that we have some final thoughts. All right, guys, let's give our final thoughts on this episode. And I'm actually going to kick off this week, kind of set some things up. I want to make sure we get to John's stuff. He's been like hinting at it throughout the entire rundown. He's got some bones to pick with you people. And then, of course, we want to hear from our vice yes. professional who has been down this journey many times, trying to get some things off her chest about how she feels how the show ended. This episode was definitely a network friendly episode. At the time, in the 70s and 80s, having an official show end and announcing it ahead of time to an extended run was great for ratings. But they didn't do anything in this episode to appease fans. Other than just gratuitous Rico and Sunny storyline, they didn't do anything for the fans. This was a ratings grab by them to have this extended last episode of All of My Advice. And I enjoyed it, but there is so much left that I really, really hoped that they would cover. First of all, the Highsmith story. And that I thought that would be a much deeper storyline. That was such a huge deal and over the line that the chief of police was dirty. He was running his own separate force that was working outside of the law. That should have been such a huge deal in this episode. But instead, we got a generic, we got a generic South American cartel person and everyone's dirty, especially the people at the DEA. So this was just a by the numbers Miami Vice storyline. But I really wish that was Highsmith. I really wish we got an official close to the Stan storyline. What happens to him? What What is going to happen after all of this? Because he still is a compulsive gambler. And then, of course, the elephant in the room is the Burnett story. And how does that not come up with the Highsmith, a dirty police chief, a cop that formerly had amnesia? How do those two not make the most amazing episode of Vice ever? where all of the Vice team has to pull together to save Sonny. John, what are your final thoughts? It was a good episode, not great episode. And you are right that I have a number of bones to pick. I am very much in the same corner 
uh, as you as far as uh, I really felt like this episode was going to be a lot different. I was new going in that it was a rip from the headlines episode, but I wasn't expecting it to be like a paint by numbers Miami Vice episode. Shows don't always get a clean end series show. And so normally when a show knows that this is the last one we're ever going to do, they normally make it all about the characters on the show and finishing, not just finishing storylines, but giving closure to the fans for each of the characters. And the episode, you get closure with Tubbs and Crockett, with them leaving the forest. Even if you don't know what they're going to go do, even if that's still a mystery, you get a closure with them giving up their lives as police officers and going into the unknown. There are more characters on the show than just Tubbs and Crockett. And they didn't give anyone else any consideration. Gina literally got one scene. Trudy got two. They had about 30 seconds of airtime and about four total lines, I think. After five years of being on the show, like at one point, they were major characters in Vice. And even though their role was less significant in the fifth season, they deserved their due. Like car- fans liked, well, fans were fans of Trudy and Gina just as much as they were of Crockett and Tubbs. Uh, like they should have gotten a little bit, even if it was just a little bit of the storyline about them, you know? And then to just us with Stan's gambling thing, the way it was, well, he's still a gambler. He might not have a job, but we're not going to check back in on any of that. Like I felt like it was very real selfish of them to not, to not give us any of that, you know, that's I think that's why I expected the episode to be different. I thought it was going to be something that was going to be full of montages and flashbacks, and it was going to be all about each of the characters, and they were going to have a little bit of their own ending. But instead, we just got a regular Miami Vice episode, dynamic duo of Tubbs and Crockett just right off into the sub- sunset at the end, like none of these other characters existed. Absolutely. And, and that's something I didn't touch on that I totally agree with, is that Everyone else on the team was basically in- invisible. Even Castillo. Melissa, I'm going to give you the final word on this. And I know we're, we're being critical on this episode. And it's partially coming from our pain of not being any more Miami Vice after this. <laughs> it hurts. <laughs> what are your final thoughts, Melissa? Well, I mean, I can't disagree with you guys on the points that you've made. I think... It's a good episode for Miami Vice. Look, listen, it's a good Miami Vice episode. If it was a regular episode, it would be a pretty good episode. You know, if you weren't, if it wasn't for the series finale, this would be a good episode. We'd be saying like, oh yeah, they we got closure. They close up. They got the guy. You know, that there was everybody was in it, and there's all these things. It was twists and turns and things you didn't expect, and we would be saying it was a good episode. But because it's the series finale, it's a disappointment because I want, like you've all said, I wanted to see what was going to happen with Stan. I wanted to see what was going to happen with the girls. They, I feel bad that they were like, okay, well, that's it. They're an afterthought. But mostly I was really upset that I don't get to see what them say goodbye to Castillo. Them, like, it's not necessarily mm. like what I, I mean, I, I obviously I care what those, those people are going to do, like, what you know, when this is over. But the if they were worked together for the last five years, like you're telling me that Sonny doesn't go say goodbye to Gina, that he yeah, doesn't go say no, goodbye to those, those people. There was absolutely no goodbye. Yeah, that you don't get you don't get any of that. So that I was disappointed in that, obviously, and I was disappointed that there. I was always I've always been disappointed that there's not more Izzy, like like some kind of send off to Izzy because he's been there through the whole entire thing <laughs> and he's helped them so uh-huh. much. He's done so much for them, even though, like, yeah, it's always been like a threat. He was going to go back to prison. And, you know, you guys, I've echoed the same things. If it was just a regular episode, I'd be like, yeah, this is a good episode. This is good. But because it was a series finale, I've always been disappointed. But I will say this. I love the the tubs and Crockett stuff. Like, you get to see they're going to be gone. They're going to part, they're going to part their ways. But that they did like a call. They do like the call back to them first meeting. And they're basically tell each other they love each other, basically. And, you know, they're going to miss each other. And you think, you know, maybe there's a chance that they're going to go be cops somewhere else. Maybe. You know. <laughs> I feel very similar to the way I felt with The Sopranos. I really loved The Sopranos series. Kind of all right with the ending. You know, some people hate it. They don't hate the last episode of The Sopranos. It's just like, eh. But I love The Sopranos series. So, and I feel, kind of feel like I'm in this, I'm left leaving Vice with that same kind of feeling. Like, I loved Vice. Last episode, meh. <laughs> Just one piece of context before we close out this episode. I wonder 
if we would be interpreting this episode differently if we didn't watch too much too late last week. That was such an amazing episode. And if we had watched this episode, Freefall, immediately after Victims of Circumstance, which is how it aired on NBC, if we would have a different opinion about the quality that this episode was, not getting th- four more episodes, one of them, whatever, is Joey, but the three others were really good episodes. I will say that because I watched it original. I watched the original airing of it. And I would, I mean, I was young, I was little, but like, I still remember being like, oh, that's a really good ending. Like thinking it was a good ending, that there was nothing I didn't care. Uh. Like I didn't care at that time about, you know, that they didn't clip out the girls or because you were so wrapped up in the the fact that it was just Tubbs and Crockett. You were Mm -hmm. like, oh, you know, like being emotional that that was going to be the end of it and they're not going to be cops anymore and they're going to ride off in the sunset. And there you go. And then was perfectly satisfied with that. And that's going to do it for us this week on Go With The Heat. We would love to hear from you. Email us, gowiththeheat at gmail.com and let us know what you think about this episode and our thoughts on it and which side you're on. Would it change based on how we watched it, the order in which we watched it? We being unfair to this episode because we were pretty hard on it about not closing out specific storylines that we were looking for. Um, and they did kind of close what them out. What do you out, guys but... think? What do you guys think of where the characters went after everything? Do you think the pirates eventually caught up to Crockett? <laughs> we would... Tubbs eventually browbeat Valerie into marrying him. We would love to hear from you too about what you think, how the show ended, what your thoughts are on the ending of the show. We would love to hear from you. Email us, goalwiththeheat at gmail.com. Get us on Twitter at go with the heat, Instagram at go with the heat, Facebook.com slash go with the heat. We have plenty of ways you can contact us. We would love to hear from you and how you think the show ended. Get your rants out. We want to hear them because we're going to be back next week to talk about the season five recap. Remember, at the beginning was the end of the Burnett storyline and then to where we are now, the path, the journey that we go down throughout season five to get here. We would love to hear from you. Email us, goldtheheat at gmail.com. Check out that website, goldtheheat.com. You can find all the ways to contact us, all the ways that you can make sure that you get these last two episodes that we're going to do forever of the Gold to Heat podcast. Technically not forever. We'll probably be back sooner than we know it. And uh, don't take what I'm saying as the truth. <laughs> I'm saying we'd love to hear from you. Check out that website. Be sure to come back for these two more episodes. We have our season five recap with our clip show of all of our best stuff from season five. And then we have our whole show, all of Miami Vice. And I don't think we're ready for that. To talk about how this is this is it. We made it all the way through Miami Vice. So let's look back at the entire thing and pick out our favorite moments, our favorite times that we had our favorite episodes of my advice so we would love for you to come back for these final two episodes that's going to do it for us this week we hope you enjoyed this episode and we'll see y'all next time bye pal bye